Ice up. Ice what? Whoa, whoa, baby. Poke it out. Poke it out. Poke it out. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today is a big day. This is where we preview and predict the New Orleans Saints versus Tampa Bay Buccaneers week nine. It's a big game. It's something that means the world to both of these teams. This right here could be the NFC South title at the end of the year. It really has all come down to this. It's huge. I don't really know what else to say other than the fact that this is a ginormous game for both teams involved. They will both give their heart to win this game, and we're in for a good one on Sunday Night Football, I think. I think it's going to be a close fight. I think it's going to be something that comes down to the wire. And uh, I just am super excited to watch it. I hope you guys are too. Um, you can join the Flick Chat in the description or the Discord in the description as well if you guys want to talk to me and other Saints fans while this game is going on. I won't be able to stream it this week, unfortunately, but I will be streaming the next week's game versus the San Francisco 49ers. So look for that. I wish I could stream this week's, but this is something I have to watch with no delay, boys. It's going to be a big game. Um, but with all that being said, let's just go ahead and get straight into the New Orleans Saints versus Tampa Bay Buccaneers Week 9 preview and predictions. And the first thing we always go over in these preview and prediction videos are injuries. And this week, it's looking pretty good for both teams. The New Orleans Saints only have three players on the injury report. One player on the injury report, act actually, and then the two players, are other two players are on injury, or injury reserve. Um, defensive tackle Sheldon Rankins is on injury reserve. Cornerback Justin Hardy is on injury reserve as well. Michael Thomas was the only player, the only active player on the injury report who showed up with a game designation as questionable, but he is expected to play. It has been said by many people close to the Saints and every reporter on planet Earth that Michael Thomas is expected to play against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So get your eyes ready because number 13 is about to take the field for the first time since these two teams met back in week one where he had three catches for 17 yards. I'm sure he's going to want to change the outcome of how he plays against the Buccaneers. The Buccaneers injury report is small as well. It, these teams are looking real good for as far as health goes so far. Chris Godwin is questionable but expected to play after having surgery on his thumb. Pretty insane that he's expected to play. I'm not sure how this will affect his play. Look for a few more drops than usual Usual for Chris Godwin. He might even have to leave the game halfway through because Brady threw a bullet that took the, the stitches out of his finger. We don't know, um, but I, I just don't think that he's able to play at 100% after just getting surgery on his finger. So make sure to keep a close eye on him and how he plays. Ali Marpet, the guard for the, uh, one of the guards for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, is out. It's big for Tampa. Their offensive line that allowed three sacks to the New Orleans Saints in week one will be without one of its starting players. So it's a pretty big hit for someone that clearly needs the help against a team with such a dominant defensive line. So like I said, both of these teams will be rather healthy headed into this matchup, which is good to hear for both sides. If you beat a team, you want to beat them when they're at their full strength. You want a fair, healthy matchup so you can make that statement that you want to make. The last time the Saints and Buccaneers played was in week one of this year, where the Saints got a commanding 34-23, that should have been 41-23 victory over the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, but a lot has changed since then. Tampa has went into full nuclear explosion mode, minus the close win uh, to the against the New York Giants, blowing out the Packers and other teams on their way, and have been almost flawless on both sides of the ball. Tom Brady has been doing his thing, he has an insane amount of touchdowns. He hasn't been throwing many picks. He hasn't been turning the ball over. Um, of course, that's one of the main reasons why the Saints won in week one. They won by 11 points after scoring 14 points off of Tom Brady interceptions. So if he continues to play like he's been playing for the majority of the season um, this week, the Saints could be in trouble. They need to win that turnover battle, and Tom Brady is looking like he doesn't want us to do that. In the same time span of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers going nuclear mode, the Saints have struggled to get wins, winning two games in overtime and every single other game by one score. We haven't had a commanding win since our commanding win against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Matter of fact, the only game this year that the Saints have won by two scores was that week one matchup versus the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So I don't know if that means that the Saints were just really good when that happened. That's what happens when we're healthy. Or if the Tampa Bay Buccaneers just weren't there yet as far as team chemistry goes. That's something we're going to see this week as well. 
The Saints shouldn't struggle as much this week, though, and should be more potent on offense because they're getting all three of their top wide receivers back. The Saints will have Michael Thomas and Emmanuel Sanders back both on the field for the first time since this week one matchup. Of A lot of things that are happening now haven't happened since this week one matchup, which should make for some fireworks from the Saints offensive unit. Um, they should also, they also have, they will also have like hundred percent explosive running back Alvin Kamara, who is the only player in the NFL with 1000 plus scrimmage yards already this year. Not to mention Jared Cook has turned on having a touchdown in each of his last three games. They'll also get wide receiver Marquez Callaway back who broke out for eight receptions, 75 yards and should have had even more yards and a touchdown against the Carolina Panthers, but it was called back. With that being said though. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers are retardedly explosive as well, and it is genuinely scary. They have Mike Evans, who has seven touchdowns on the year already, six of them being within the 10-yard line. Big test for Marshawn Lattimore here. Scotty Miller, who is extremely fast, quick, and has good hands. Chris Godwin. Um, Antonio Brown, for the Christ's sake, is of course coming back against the New Orleans Saints because that's just how it is around here. For the first time since he played on the Patriots versus the Miami Dolphins, they have Rob Gronkowski who has shown that he isn't just a blocking tight end by catching multiple touchdown passes within the last couple of weeks. Ronald Jones, Leonard Fournette, and it isn't even worth going on because we all know how many weapons this Tampa Bay Buccaneers offense has, especially because they're led by one of the smartest quarterbacks in the league in Tom Brady. There is one key thing that I think the New Orleans Saints have the advantage in this game, though, and I think it's something that if the Saints do win, this will win it, and that is the ability to get pressure. The Saints offensive line is the seventh best ranked in the league, only allowing nine sacks on the year. A lot of those sacks were allowed in the early portion of the season when we were having rotating offensive linemen injuries. One of the units that got hit just like our wide receiver core did. Even though Tampa has an amazing defensive line slash front seven, I think the Saints offensive line is simply too good for them. Expect something similar to the one sack allowed by the New Orleans Saints in week one. I don't think Tampa will be able to get pressure on Breeze, especially with how quickly he gets the ball out. It's almost instant. And he will have Michael Thomas back, who has been his safety blanket for years. He's going to be getting the ball out hella quick there will not be many opportunities to sack him and if there are i think tampa gets like one on the opposite side of this tampa bay has the 11th ranked offensive line in the lead that has allowed 13 sacks on the year so far three of those sacks being to the one of the best they, i don't think they faced a better offensive line or defensive line than the new orleans saints this season three of those 13 sacks came against us they will also be missing a few big offensive linemen like ali Marp ali marpet so I think Cameron Jordan, Trey Hendrickson, David Onyemata, Malcolm Roach, and others can have a pretty big day here against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. They can rattle Tom Brady, and that is exactly what you need to do to beat this team, is to rattle Tom Brady. The New York Giants did it, and they were a pass interference call away from winning that game if Daniel Jones did some Daniel Jones, not Daniel Jones stuff, and put a, the ball in the end zone in overtime, which probably wouldn't have happened. But despite that, and despite the advantages the Saints have, and despite the offensive weapons we get back, and despite everything else, there's just something telling me that the Tampa Bay Buccaneers will win this game. And I know that's not what a lot of you guys are wanting to hear. It's extremely hard to sweep a divisional opponent. You've seen over the past couple of years, it's, it was hard to sweep the Falcons whenever we did. It's difficult to, to, to sweep a divisional opponent, especially when you have one like the Tampa Bay Buccaneers who aren't just a divisional opponent. There's someone that is competing for the NFC with us. It's going to be super hard to sweep a team that good. I think that the Tampa Bay Buccaneers pull out a close victory at home against the New Orleans Saints on Sunday Night Football. I have predicted the Saints to win every single game this year. And even in my record predictions before the season starts started, I had the Saints losing this game. I Like I said, just don't see us sweeping Tom Brady and his stupid gay-ass Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I'm sorry, boys, but... That's just how I feel. I think that the Saints are going to lose this game 40-34 to Tampa Bay victory. I just, hopefully I'm wrong. Hopefully this just goes and jinx, jinx the Tampa Bay Buccaneers like I jinxed the Chicago Bears. Who knows? I'm just hoping that something happens and the Saints get the victory here. But it's just, I don't feel like it's likely. But let's go over and look at some of the subs predictions from the Discord chat. Let's see what they have to say. 
Roll Tide Forever or Chris Highlights says 31 to 27 Saints. Saints Crib says 31 to 21 Saints. Evan or GM Pog says 31 to 28 Saints. K Ron with a bit of a longer one says I predict the Saints to win 34 to 37. Alvin Kamara has has a great day with over 100 yards and Drew has over 250 yards passing. I also think Michael Thomas will have a great comeback game with over 10 catches and 80 plus yards. I think our defense will allow quite a bit of points, but in the end, they will get the job done and help us win a big game. I think also Lattimore could also maybe get a pick. Spoon says 26 to 21 Saints, and Wyatt BDV says 34 to 30 Buccaneers. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Let me know down in the comment section below who you think is going to win this game. I appreciate your input because you guys know you have the best input on the damn internet. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you boys on the next one. Adios. I'm so sorry if you disagree with me. I'm, maybe karma will work its magic in the Buccaneers. Zero gravity falling. Like I'm jumping on a trampoline